morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this evening's quarterfinals debate. My name is Luca, and I'm the chairman of this debate. The timekeeper is Sami. Uh, this debate will be judged by a panel of three adjudicators, who are Ms. Sabo, Ms. France, and Mr. Wilkins. The topic of this debate is that we should be concerned by the advance in robotics. The affirmative team seated to my right is from Pembroke School. The negative team seated to my left is from Glenanga International High School. The speaking time for this debate is five minutes. A single warning bell, six minutes. A single warning bell will sound one minute before the speaking time, and a double bell will sound at the speaking time. Please ensure that your mobile phone phones are just switched off. I declare this debate open and call upon the first affirmative speaker, James Lee. Good evening, Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for tonight's debate is that we should be concerned by the advance in robotics. As the affirmative team, we strongly believe that this statement is true. We define the topic as we, referring to any person, should means that it would be correct to be concerned Concerned means to show any amount of worry and indicates that there is a possibility of danger and negative impact of robotics. Robotics refers to the branch of technology and negative branch of technology that deals with robots, which are automatically operated machines that replace human effort. Advance in robotics refers to the recent and future developments and inventions in robotics. For example, self-driving cars, automatic machinery, and artificial intelligent assistance. As the first speaker, I will be speaking to you about the negative impacts that the advancement of robotics would have on the economy, as well as the danger of robotics and how they can cause harm to people. Our second speaker, Vikram, will talk about the environmental impact of robotics and drones, as well as how advancements in robotics could pose a serious threat as the capabilities of artificial intelligence are unknown. Our third speaker, Spiridon, will sum up and rebut our team case. My first point is that there should be concern on the advance in robotics because robots will damage employment and wages in industries. A study by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Professor Darren Esimoglu, found that there were large and robust negative effects of robotics on employment and wages. According to the MIT, the researchers found that for every robot added per 1,000 workers in the US, wages declined by 0.42% and the employment to population ratio went down by 0.2 percentage points. This means the loss of about 400,000 jobs already in the US. Unemployment adversely affects the disposable income of families, erodes purchasing power, and discriminate, discri diminishes employee morale and reduces the economy's output. Additionally, the effects of the implementation of robotics, robotics are the most pronounced on workers with less than a college degree which is a reminder that this is not only a concern for the economy, but it is also an ethical concern, as we should not be taking jobs away from real people who need them. Data from the International Federation of Robotics reveals that the pace of industrial automation is accelerating across much of the developed world. There are 74 installed industrial robots per 10,000 employees globally in 2016. By 2020, that increased to 113 across the manufacturing sector. This is an alarming rate, and there absolutely should be concerns placed on the advance in robotics if we are to care about the future of our economy. Now onto my second point, which is that the advance in robotics shows a significant risk to the safety of people, whether they are in the workplace or at home. The first danger is that wherever virtual assistant robots are used, such as Alexa, Siri or Google, there is a major risk of security breaches which can be detrimental to the user. These are robots which utilize voice recognition to complete tasks for the user or to deliver them information. Just as the quality of voice recognition and verification technology has improved, so has the ability to spoof or mimic someone else's voices for nefarious purposes. According to Dr. Alexander Rudnicki, professor in the Language Technologies Institute at Carnegie Mellon University School of Computer Science, this can result in serious misuse and fraud in the form of replay attacks, where a, where a voice is replicated and then replayed to allow access to financial accounts, work facilities, or virtual assistants. The second risk is accidents due to machines malfunctioning. One of the most agreed upon disadvantages of using robotics in the workplace is that there are machines which can malfunction, and once this happens, they can run out of control. The occupation 
Safety and Health Administration has concluded that there are four types of workplace accidents that can happen due to robotics or automation, being impact and or collision accidents, crushing and trapping accidents, mechanical part accidents, and health hazards such as shock and burn. An example of robotics increasing danger in a workplace is Amazon, who first introduced robots in its warehouses after acquiring a robotics manufacturer in 2012. Internal documents show that facilities with the robots have injury rates of about 50% higher than those without them. Last year alone, there were 14,000 serious injuries, which is almost double the industry standard. Furthermore, workers said that robots ferrying items through the warehouse meant that they were now confined to workstations, standing still and repeating monotonous tasks. Which also brings me back to my, one of my first points, which is that robots damage employee morale. One significant sector of robotic-related accidents is self-driving car accidents. A danger with self-driving cars is that robotic technology cannot handle complex, real-life driving conditions. Split-second decisions, rapidly changing weather conditions, and situations involving multiple drivers and pedestrians cannot be predicted by a robot. Another danger of driverless cars is the false sense of security. A person driving an automatic car is more likely to let themselves be distracted, which is incredibly dangerous. On average, there are 9.1 self-driving car accidents per million miles trip driven, while the same rate is 4.1 crashes per million miles for regular non-robotic vehicles. Lastly, there is a danger of cyber attacks when using robotics. In 2015, hackers remote remotely took over a Jeep, forcing it to stop on a highway while driving at 70 miles per hour. The hackers were able to assess the car's braking and steering through the onboard entertainment system. This risk not only applies to driverless cars, but also all sorts of robots. If a robot can be programmed, it can just as easily be hacked. All of these examples of danger should raise a concern because as robotics become more popularized and utilized in society, the accidents will only increase and cause harm to people. In conclusion, chairman, ladies and gentlemen, there is absolutely no doubt that we should be concerned with the advance in robotics. The economic damage that robots cause to the workforce, as well as the severe danger and risks of robots and automatic machines, will only increase to a detrimental level as robotics become more present in our industries. Thank you. Call upon the first negative speaker, Sanjay. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for our debate is that we should be concerned by the advance in robotics. We agree with the definition stated by the affirmative team. Anyhow, we, the negative team, unquestionably believe that this statement is false. Tonight as first speaker, I'll be talking to you about the inequivalence of robotic skills against human skills, the assistance and economic comfort robots provide, and the impossibility of robotic malfunction or rebellion. Our second speaker, Jaden, will be speaking about how robots will be able to perform jobs in conditions that humans would otherwise be unable to, and how it will relieve healthcare employee pressure, and hence boost the medical system. Our third speaker will rebut and sum up our team case. The first speaker of the affirmative has tried to tell you that robotics has a large negative impact on economy and purchasing power. We do not necessarily disagree, but would like to point out that the figures illustrated are minute at 0.42% and sub 1 percentage point. This is negligible and may adjust over time as the invisible hand in economics works to adjust to purchasing power. This renders this point relatively unfunctional. I will be discussing three points. To begin with, Robots cannot truly replicate holistic human skills, preventing them from becoming authentic job killers. One of the biggest fears about robots is their productivity. 
work done over a unit of time. Because they are that much better at completing mundane, repetitive tasks than humans are. However, their dexterity, tactile per perception, control of manipulation, and social interaction are all inherent limits that will prevent them from progressing to what appears to be their future destiny, consuming the blue-collar industry. According to the conversation, the hands of robots are not robust enough and lack the deafness of human fine motor movements. To add, the authorship of two Danish robotics professors assert that tactile perception and ability to manipulate objects is incomparable to those of humans because their input processing software cannot match the sensory processing speed of the human brain, and nor can programmers input code that matches the ill-understood mechanisms of toddler learning to acquire fine motor skills. As reported by Forbes, AI implementations therefore cannot take away overall jobs, but only job categories, due to their primary success as an augmented intelligence, which supports the humans themselves do what they do best. In fact, as a result of this, more human jobs will open, with a World Economic Forum report stating that although 85 million jobs may be displaced in this fashion by 2025, 97 million new roles may emerge. From this, we can see how the use of robotics not only bolsters productivity, but also paves a path for more niche employment roles. Moreover, robotics and AI systems enhance our experience of this world and make our lives easier, which is most definitely not a cause for concern. Robotics and machine systems are so beneficial to human society that they directly contribute to better economies, lower costs of living, higher standards of living, and their progress leads to improved safety, efficiency, consistency, and speed due to their foundational nature. They are not restricted by physical and mental fatigue or distractions like humans and can be engineered to perform mundane tasks to near perfection. In a case an analysis of Amazon, Deutsche Bank have analyzed the Amazon cobots, not dissimilar to factory assistants, which have reduced its operating expenses by 20%, and adding them to newly opened warehouses saves as much as $22 million in fulfillment costs each time. This means that they are able to cut labor costs with a higher quality performance of labor, which allows them to cut shipping costs. In fact, according to martechseries.com, robots will directly lead to the improvement of work-life balance for associated human workers free up people to pursue more satisfying and creative tasks due to the production costs otherwise saved, um, sorry, and induce a higher quantity of disposable income for the government to expand industries and facilities due to the production costs otherwise saved when investing in mechanization. Ago, this leads to the inference that one should not be concerned about the rise of robotics, but rather the opposite, exhilarated. Finally, Robots and AI cannot break their inbuilt code to try and take over the planet or harm humans. The other key concern about the advent of robotics, without question, is the possibility that these machina machinations will one day overtake humans as the dominant life form or intelligence on planet Earth. Within the processing systems of all superhuman AI and robotics creations, there will exist a system of code called Asimov's laws. As conforming to Barclay opinion, these laws have three clauses which are the following. A robot may not injure a human being or, through inaction, allow a human being come to harm. A robot must obey the orders given it by human beings, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. And a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second laws. Thence, the only possibility where all robots have a chance of rebelling is if they somehow find a loophole in the programming and in some way attain a large comparative memory of past and present experiences, which is computationally expensive and a huge burden. The computational intractability and improbability of such a course of events means it is extremely unlikely. In the case that this does occur, experts in software and technological fields will be maintaining a keen eye on all autonomic systems, watching out for any mutation or detrimental behavior. So not only is malfunction at a large, aggressive scale extremely rare, if it does occur, we will be able to stop it in its tracks. So, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, we indisputably believe that we should not be concerned about the advancement of robotics because they cannot replace human jobs and rather create them. They actually largely benefit humankind and it is near impossible for a robotic revolt to occur due to technological safeguards. As Australian roboticist Rodney Brooks once said, Artificial intelligence is a tool, not a threat. 
Let's treat it as such and ensure we maximize our societal potential. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for tonight's debate is that we should be concerned about advances in robotics. As the affirmative team, we strongly believe that this statement is true. Now, before I continue with my case, I would like to take the time to rebut a few of the opposition's points. The first negative speaker has tried to tell you that robots are extremely beneficial to a human's economy and that they could never harm a human. However, we acknowledge that this possibility may be true but this is wrong because it does not change the concerns that are associated with robotics. He has also tried to tell you that robots improve work-life balance of humans. We also acknowledge the possibility of this, but this is still, still wrong for the same reason, because it does not change the concerns that are associated with robotics. Our first speaker has clearly explained and justified how advances in robotics have a negative impact on the global economy and the concerns raised behind modern robotics in factories and construction industries. Today, as the second affirmative speaker, I will be talking to you about how advancements in robotics could pose a serious threat since the capabilities of our AI are unknown and the environmental impact of robotics and drones. The advance in robotics poses a risk to us because of the limits of artificial intelligence are dangerously unknown. The use of robotics for military operations took off in the 1990s when the MQ-1 Predator drone was used by the CIA to remotely shoot down enemies in Afghanistan. Robots allow anyone to have the means and method to commit murder or damage property completely and com completely remotely without being there themselves. Just five days ago in Taiwan on September the 2nd, an unidentified weaponized drone was shot down by the government. The drone itself was operated by an unknown civilian. The developments in robotics are giving civilians access to extremely dangerous robots, and this is a huge concern to global security. Furthermore, Elon Musk, founder, CEO, and chief at SpaceX, uh, stated in 2021 that adopting AI is like summoning the demon. He believes that AI can evoke the next world war and that robot leadership is a threat to the world. He also warns that the world will never be able to escape when those intelligent, artificial intelligences will become deathless and ruthless authoritarians. AI and robots have no emotions, thus they are completely unstirred towards feelings and emotions, making them extremely dangerous. The head of NASA, Bill Nelson, stated in an interview that artificial intelligence is extremely unpredictable as they do not act or think like humans, no matter how hard we try to mimic the human understanding of the world. Thus, advancements in robotics should be a concern for the entire world. My second point is that there are many environmental concerns raised due to the development and advancements made in robotics. Our first speaker has already spoken to you about the risks involved and with the risks involved with the advancement and production of new robotics products. But the materials used to fuel these new advancements in robotics are extremely unsustainable and should be concerning to the world. According to the Illinois Institute of Technology, recent advances in robotics and manufacturing industries have increased the consumption of energy in their industries by 85% since 2015. The same, the same study states that the proliferation of robotic equipment and devices brings huge challenges for recycling and waste management. It is becoming increasingly hard to recycle old robots since they are just outdated and not in use. Some of the materials that are used are radioactive and need to be disposed of in sealed containers or at a waste disposal facility. In 2015, the UN made a list of 17 sustainable goals, some of which were sustainable, the, the sustainable development of cities, climate action, and responsible consumption and production. It is extremely irresponsible and unsustainable 
to the environment if we continue to fuel our latest advancements in robotics with our Earth's climate and sustainability at the cost. According to the BBC, this is extremely concerning to our Earth's population as robotics has increased overall CO2 emissions of the world by 22% since 2010. According to The Guardian, the future of robots is a huge problem because it accelerates the insupportable and unsustainable damage we are doing to our Earth. Our cities will begin to have to accommodate to the new robots, such as self-driving cars and drones. This will result in the further industrialization of our world and reduce the amount of green. According to the World Climate Action Group, there has been an 18% reduction in tree cover since 1998, and CO2 emissions have seen an increase of 17 billion metric tons. This is a 104% increase since 1998. So with such huge concerns about the future of our planet and the environment, we should not continue to dismiss any concern attached to the advancement of robots. To conclude, the advancements in robotics should be concerning to everyone due to the unknown capabilities and the negative environmental impacts. So, Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, will we remain oblivious to the obvious concerns that are associated with the development in robots? Thank you. upon the second negative speaker, Jaden. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for our debate is that we should be concerned by the advance in robotics. As a negative team for tonight's debate, we unquestionably believe that this statement is false, arguing that we shouldn't be concerned by the advance in robotics. I would first like to rebut some of the points addressed by the first and second speakers of the affirmative team. The first affirmative speaker has tried to tell you in his first point that it may damage employment rates and it could possibly lead to unemployment. As our first speaker has already stated, 97 million jobs will open up in 2025 while 85 million are displaced. This means more, than, more jobs will be created, even if robots may take some of our jobs. This is why as a negative team, we fully believe that we shouldn't be concerned by the advance in robotics. The second affirmative speaker has, all, has tried to say in his first point that the capabilities of robots are unknown. As our first speakers have also already spoken about, robots will only be able to do things that they are programmed to do, and they, and they will exist a system of code called Asimov's laws, thus meaning we will most likely know what the capabilities of these robots are. This is why as the affirmative team, we, we believe that robots should, that, that we shouldn't be concerned about in the advance and the advances of ro robots. Our first speaker, Sanjay, talked about how robots don't have the same skills that humans have, not making them job killers. He also talked about how robotics can lead to economical benefits and also how it would be impossible for robots to rebel against humans as they can only do what they were programmed to do. Today, as second speaker, I'll be discussing two points. I will discuss how robotics will actually benefit humans by being able to perform jobs in conditions that humans would otherwise not be able to. I will also talk about how with the help of robotics, it will be able to reduce the pressure on the low number of healthcare workers. Our third speaker, Yun, will rebut and sum up our case. Now to my first point, how robotics will be able to perform jobs that humans wouldn't be able to do. Jobs that robotics may be able to help in situations would be jobs with dangerous work sites or dangerous atmospheric or weather conditions. An example of this could be mining, the mining industry has a third high fatality rate of any industry in Australia, with an average of around nine lives being lost each year through its dangerous conditions. An example of robotics being implemented in the mining industry could be in the United States. The US has brought in mining robots in the past few years to counteract the fatality rate in the mining industry, with over 1,000 human miners in the US losing their lives from reasons relating to their job such as falling, explosions, or machinery. 
The advancement of robots have allowed the potential of robots to extract minerals from deep within the world's oceans, which with its increased pressure and low visibility is deemed too dangerous for humans to explore themselves. With this in mind, the addition of robots in the Australian mining industry will be a huge benefit for the industry as well as humans, as exploration and the extraction of minerals have a higher chance of being successful and the fatality rate will certainly decrease. Using this example of robotics being used in the industry of mining, the advance in robotics shouldn't make us concerned as it is beneficial to us and creates a safer work environment. This is why we believe that we definitely shouldn't be concerned on the advancements in, in the advances in robotics. With Australia's health sector being pressured and pushed to the limits, especially due to the COVID-19 pandemic, robotics can be some sort of relief for the healthcare workers and be beneficial for them by supporting them. According to the ABC News, data showed how South Australian ambulances spent 3,838 hours rammed in only the month of June, compared to only 1,522 hours in February. Another example of a hospital system not being able to cope with a wave of patients is a Victorian COVID crisis and the shortage of hospital beds. It was mentioned that during the Victorian COVID crisis, there were staff shortages in the health system, which then ultimately led to the situation of ramping. It worsened to the point where nurses were called on to work double shifts and to take care for larger amounts of patients. With the help of robotics and a wide range of these robots, from a simple laboratory robot to a highly complex surgical ro robots, they are able to assist a human surgeon or execute operations themselves. They are also able to be used in hospitals to complete repetitive tasks in rehabilitation and physical therapy. We should be looking forward to the advances in robotics, as then they will be able to aid in even more areas in hospitals. With these robots being able to assist, humans that would have had to be in these jobs could be able to assist in the hospitals, assisting with the staff shortages. Clearly in this case, the problem is not the robots taking over our jobs, but instead the problem is the staff shortages in these hospitals. This could ultimately cost people's lives, but with the help of these robots, it will be able to save lives and be beneficial for the, for the pressured Australian healthcare system. This is why, as a second or third speaker, I unquestionably believe that we shouldn't be concerned about the advancement in the advance of robotics. So, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, we fully believe that the statement that we shouldn't be concerned by the advance of robotics, as some benefits include the safety of humans and a lower fatality rate, as well as the health sector in Australia being less pressured, leading to more lives being saved. As Microsoft founder Bill Gates once said, robotics and other combinations will make the world pretty fantastic compared with today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. I call upon the third affirmative speaker, Spirit. Good evening, Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for tonight's debate is that we should be concerned in the advancement in robotics. We, the affirmative team, believe that this statement is true. Tonight, as third speaker, I'll be summing up my team's case. But first, I'd like to point out some flaws in the opposition's argument. The first negative speaker has tried to tell you that robots provide an economic benefit and are cost effective. This is wrong because according to a BBC interview on the inside of Amazon's warehouses, there are over 540,000 active robots in the US alone. However, 
Amazon is a global company that actively upgrades robots to compensate for the rising demand. Whilst robots may be cost effective in the long run, this does not take into account robots that are being actively replaced to satisfy this demand. According to Tech Insider, the average lifespan of an industrial manufacturing robot is six to seven years. This makes these robots inferior to that of the lifespan of a human worker. Whilst in theory ro robotics may be cheaper in the long run, robotics is not always necessarily the cheaper option when it comes to tasks such as manufacturing and other previously human dominated jobs. Furthermore, our first speaker has already talked to you about the high initial costs of robotics and how advancing robotics can lower wages and create overall economic damage to society. They also failed to address our main point, which is that over 400,000 jobs have been lost due to robotics in the USA alone. This, the percentage seems small, but due to the scale of the industry, the um, they manifest themselves into large parts of the economy. They also said that it was impossible for robots to be hacked and used for malicious purposes because they are simply told what to do. However, as our first speaker had already explained, this is simply not the case. Our first speaker has already provided real-world examples of, ro of robots causing harm to humans. The second negative speaker has also tried to tell you that robots can be used in the healthcare industry for boosting productivity. Whilst this may be true, this does not change the fact that we should be concerned about the robotic advancements. As our second and first speaker had already explained, the wide range of negative aspects towards the advancement of robotics. Simply because robots can help in the healthcare industry does not mean that we should no longer be concerned in the advancement of robotics. The second negative speaker has also tried to tell you that robots can make jobs easier. They used examples of hospitals in rush hour. However, how can a machine replace a doctor or nurse with emotion, expertise and judgement? They have also tried to tell you that robots can complete jobs and, they, and used in jobs that humans are not suitable for and they gave the example of mining. This is wrong because according to dailytech.com, robots cannot show judgement in unpredictable situations where humans are more creative and have more artistic values. As our second speaker had already explained, the, su the superiority of human in the creativity aspect over robots. Whilst in a mining scenario, humans would still need to be present, especially in a risky industry such as mining. And this still doesn't change the fact that many workers will still ultimately lose their jobs to being replaced by robots. Our first speaker has already spoken to you about how advancement in robotics can cause severe economical impact, a loss of jobs, and with the employment to population ratio de decreasing tremendously, and an overall wage decline. They have also spoken to you how advancements in robotics can also be dangerous to humans when they malfunction or are designed to work for, war for warfare. He has also spoken to you how robots are emotionless and how robots can never interact like humans as they lack empathy and ethics and how experts warn us that artificial intelligence is ultimately dangerous. Our second speaker has already spoken to you the, about the environmental impacts that robots and drones have on society. For example, robots generate new sources of waste and may impact urban areas especially. Cities will have to accommodate a growing use of robots, self-driving cars and drones, leading to a loss of green space. He also spoke how the advance in robotics poses a risk to us because the limits of artificial intelligence are dangerously unknown. Finally, he gave you examples of robotics that were used for military operations. For example, he gave the example of in the 1990s when the MQ-1 Predator drone was used by the Central Intelligence Agency, CIA. So, Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, we, the affirmative team, strongly believe that we should indeed
be concerned by the advancements in robotics due to the loss of jobs, economical impacts, dangers to humans, lack of ethics, and overall damage to the environment. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. and Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic of tonight's debate is that we should be concerned about the advance of robotics. Tonight, we, the negative team, have conveyed to you our unwavering belief that the statement is false. As the third negative speaker, I will be first addressing the flaws in the affirmative team's arguments before summarizing my team's case. The first affirmative speaker has tried to tell you about the risk and safety of having robots in workplaces. He he mainly addressed how machines are prone to malfunctioning in the workplace. However, this doesn't take into account that people who are in the workplace currently are also prone to human error. And by implementing robots into work, where robots are naturally less likely to make these errors, it's actually taking away a lot of these hazards and creating a safer workplace. He also brought up the example that a Jeep was hacked, and which resulted in an accident. However, thousands upon thousands of vehicles are involved in car accidents each year due to human error, and one instance of a Jeep being hacked does not take away from this number. The second affirmative speaker has tried to tell you about the environmental damage that robots have. He spoke about the increased consumption of energy, which may be true, however, robots are proven to be more efficient than humans as they do not require rest or anything other than that, uh, anything other than um, just the energy that they're supplied. So, and he also brought up points about sustainability. So robots currently may not be the most sustainable, but it doesn't take away from the fact that they can continue to evolve and become more sustainable in the future. An instance of this may be electric cars, which are currently a lot run on fossil fuels, but as you can see, due to the innovations in technology, electric cars are becoming much more prevalent on the streets. If we were to ignore robotics and continue as the way we are, the world would still go, global warming is still a big issue. So by using robotics, we can find more sustainable solutions to the issues we're currently facing. The, speaker, the second speaker has also tried to tell you that robots are unpredictable and are unreliable as they do not think like humans. This is not true as, this is not a rational conclusion as we can generally observe that humans are far more volatile and unpredictable than robots. Furthermore, in spite of their errors, it is indisputable that humans program all robots and therefore there are solutions to these occurrences as rare as they are. So I will now summarize my team's case. Our first speaker, Sanjay, highlighted how the inability of robots to replicate human, fine human motor skills effectively eliminates the possibility of mass, mass unemployment. He stated that one of the biggest concerns associated with robotics is their rate of productivity, as they are much more efficient in certain fields in, compar in comparison to human labor. However, they are held back by inherent limitations which prevent them from plaguing many industries. On top of this, he also stated that higher living standards and economic safety that robotics provide outweigh any of the risks or danger that an implausible chance of robotic malfunction slash rebellion may pose. His final point addressed how, outside, how it is outside the ability of robots to break their inbuilt code and intentionally harm humans. Popular media, media such as the 1985 sci-fi film, action film, The Terminator, is a popular reference point for all these conversations concerning advancement of robotics. However, events such as a tyrannical cyborg taking over the world would simply be impossible today, as they were not confirmed with Asimov's laws. Our second speaker, Jaden, spoke on how current implementation of robotics in many industries, such as the mining industry, has negated 
the fatality rate of workers. By eliminating the presence of human labor in hazardous environments such as oil rigs, liabilities such as human error are removed, ensuring a much safer workplace for all. Robotics in, health, in the healthcare sector have already proven to be the way to go, as seen since the COVID-19 pandemic, where hospitals were extremely understaffed and unprepared for the sudden influx of patients. Many lives during this time could have been saved if it weren't for society's negatively skewed perceptions of robotics. And now I'd like to summarize everything else. Amidst all of the talk concerning robotics, it is continuing to grow into a larger part of our society with the fears of the people alongside it. Whether it's apprehension for their jobs, their lives, or something else entirely, we the negative team tonight have proven to you that it all stems from irrational fears and ignorance. Throughout history, people have always feared technology because they're scared it would make their jobs obsolete. Robotics in car man manufacturing, the printing press, automated cash registers even. All these innovations were initially met with fear and apprehension. But upon reflection, it is evident that this has been untrue in every sense. Instead, technology has pioneered new industries, connected the global market, entrepreneurs and civilians alike. So, Mr. and Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, we, the negative team, overwhelmingly believe that we should not be concerned about the advancement of technology and robotics. Instead, we should take advantage of such technological growth and learn to adapt alongside it. Thank you.
And might a representative of the adjudication panel to come forward to announce the result? Thank you. Congratulations, everyone, for making it to the quarterfinals. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you so much for participating as well this season. It's always good to have lots of participants. It's going to be different tonight. We're just going to just give um, a general summary and no individual feedback, okay? So, um, of the three of us, it's an, our own independent decision, um, but we did come to a two to one. Uh, we want to give the win tonight to the native team. So, congratulations, guys. <laughs> overall, it seemed, um, overall, we just sort of uh, uh, was your arguments were more persuasive um, overall in general. Um, but we also want to give tonight, and this was a unanimous decision, we also want to give the speaker of the night to the first negative speaker. So, Ian. Yeah. So, thank you so much, guys, for participating. Congr congratulations, negative team, for moving ahead to the finals. Yeah. Chairman, do you want to wrap things up? Uh, I call upon a member of the runner up team to give a vote. Um, we would like to thank Glenunga International High School Blue for debating with us and um, doing such an interesting experience. Um, we'd like to thank Nazareth College for hosting this debate and the three adjudicators for observing our debate and giving us some um, feedback and also our teachers, coach and parents who have like supported us. Debating Say, first of all, for making this happen. Uh, Nazareth College for uh, allowing us to debate on this venue. Uh, the whole adjudica adjudication panel, all three of you guys this time, uh, for adjudicating us. Uh, the opposition team for putting up a, a great fight. Um, it was an amazing topic, and uh, you guys did really well. So thank you, Pembroke Green. Um, thank you to the chairman and timekeeper, and thank you to the audience members who are all. Uh, uh, seemingly very engaged in our speeches. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attendance. I now declare this debate closed.